God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. One of the most familiar passages from our prayer book is the so-called summary of the law. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Anyone who fulfills this commandment Anyone who loves according to this pattern will fulfill the whole law. Our whole duty to God and to our neighbor will be fulfilled if we can but love rightly. And so this summary of the law is placed at the very beginning of the Mass, within the great preparatory rites, so that we will hear it every week, and so that we will hear it as we prepare to hear God's word and to receive our Lord in the Holy Communion. We hear it regularly so that over time it may become familiar to us, so that God may write both these, his laws, in our hearts. But we hear it at this point in the Mass so that we might ask ourselves whether and in what ways we have fulfilled or failed to fulfill these laws since our last communion. Before we come into the presence of God, we must know what sort of persons we are because we must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We cannot worship in truth if we do not know, or even worse, we do know and we try to deny the sort of person we are. And we will know what sort of person we are when we know how we love, because what we love and how we love it will tell us what really matters to us. If I love my family more than I love my car, for example, I will spend more time with them than I do in my garage. That's a simple example, but how often do our family's needs go begging because we have something else that whether we know it or not, we value more than we value them. Hobbies, other friends, our jobs, all these can become the objects of our love rather than the ones we claim to love. If I never actually examine how I love, then I can never really know what sort of person I am. I will be like Dives, the rich man in this morning's gospel, thinking that my happiness ultimately lies in riches and the good things they can buy. I will fall short of that which alone can make me truly happy, the God who is love and the proper object of all my love. If I am to know who and what I really am, I must know how I love. So let's look at how our Lord tells us to love. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, he says, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. So notice first that although the command to love is twofold, God and neighbor, there is nonetheless an order between them. The first commandment is the great commandment, because it demands our whole life and our whole being with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. But of course we know that already, we know it in ourselves, in the very depths of who we are as human beings. Our liturgical year began in Advent, in the season of longing, in the darkness of winter, and in the darkness of our inarticulate learning, yearnings, waiting for the dawning of the light. Like as the heart desireth the water brooks, so longeth my soul after thee, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, yea, even for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? God has made us for himself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in him, until they rest in a love that fulfills all their desire to love and to be loved, until we love God with all our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Of course, we may ask ourselves the question, if we love God with all that we are, will we have any love left with which to love our neighbors? It may seem to us that we have only so much love to give and that to love God with all that we are will mean to love nothing else. 
But this cannot be. As our epistle tells us this morning, in this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. The thing is this. To love God is to love him for who and what he is. But God is essentially love. And he loves all that he has created. For us not to love what God loves is not to love God. If we believe that God does not love any person or anything that he has created, then we do not yet know God. And therefore what we love is not really him. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Precisely because part of loving God is loving what God loves. If I am to know who and what I really am, I must know how I love. In the first half of the Christian year, we have seen God revealed to us in his love for us. And the saving acts of the God who is essentially love. Having seen him and known him to be the only source of our true happiness, we must learn to love him, which also means loving our neighbors as he would have us love them. That is, without any limit, so long as we do not make them into God. In the season after Trinity, the Church will set before us passages of Scripture that illustrate how our love must be reordered if we are to love God and our neighbor rightly and thus find the happiness we desire. In these passages, if we are attentive and prayerful, we will see ourselves. Sometimes we will see how we have learned to love rightly, but more often we will see how we need to love differently, how we must love one thing more and another less, so that we might love God above all things, and our neighbors as ourselves, and as God would have us love them. And thus we come to know what sorts of persons we truly are. The great gulf fixed between Dives and those who dwell in Abraham's bosom is nothing more or less than the gulf fixed between those who love rightly, that is, in right order, in accordance with the truth, with reality, and those who have not learned how to love aright. This trinity tide let us be attentive to God and to ourselves. Let us ask God to show us what sort of persons we are so that we might learn to love him in spirit and in truth. Let us ask him to destroy in us all that is false and self-seeking so that he might more and more live his life in and through us. Let us be more loving in our communions, enthroning Jesus in our hearts, sitting silently with him as he works in us the good purpose of his perfect will so that as we go forth from this place, he may live in us, the world into which we go, loving our neighbor through us, to the glory of his Father, to whom with him and the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen.